I think when you look at the that period of Scottish football, and, and it's just incredible that the sheer length of time that obviously Bill Struth was, was manager at Rangers Football Club, um, the changes that were actually taking place in Scottish society and, and through Scottish football as well was quite remarkable. When you look at the the, the time when, when Bill Struth becomes manager, what, 1920, Scottish football was, was going through a huge period of, of trans, uh, transition. Um, only 20 years earlier, the game had really just gone professional. Um, a lot of the clubs by the turn of the century were just starting to become companies. Um, so the old amateur era where you had a committee was changing and uh, the clubs were becoming really run not by uh, committees but by uh, board, board of directors. Um, so the manager role was a, was a very new role by the, the early 20th century. And obviously at Rangers, um, William Wilton had become the first manager. Um, so from that perspective, um, the I, I think Bill Struth really, when he comes in in 1920, um, he brings a lot of experience with him. Um, and the thing about the, the position of, of the manager at any club at that particular time is that people think about the manager then uh, purely being a, a, like a manager of a factory. And there was an element of that you were running a business. Um, so you didn't have the, the direct day-to-day -day, um, connection to uh, the training aspect of the game. But Bill had that... Uh, that connection from the point of view he had a, an experience of being a trainer even before he, he came to Rangers um, and I think the one thing that, that, that Bill had uh, which was very important and that's why Rangers had so much success over that period of time um, is the simple fact that um, he could pick a player he, 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 he knew the game inside out he knew good players and he knew how to blend the players one thing I would say is his obviously his long period of time 34 years as manager of Rangers is, is quite remarkable um, when you look at it from today's perspective. Um, back then, actually, there were a number of managers who, who had a, a long period at clubs. Uh, John Sealer Hunter, um, a contemporary of Bill Struths, uh, the long period at, at Mullow Football Club as well. Um, obviously, uh, Willie Maley at Celtic, um, Willie uh, McCartney at Hearts. So these, these were kind of managers who weren't there for four, five, six years even, but were for, there for 20, even in some cases, uh, 30 years. But it's a success that stands out for Bill Struth over that period of time to really have so much success uh, at one football club. that That's really what stands, I think, out uh, has been remarkable for Bill. What do we know of his managerial methods? You, you, you've touched on there was others like him in, in the Scottish game who had spells of longevity at different clubs. Was there others that maybe had similar styles or even tried to, to follow his style, do you think? I think what Bill Struth does, which stands him out even from other contemporary managers at the time, is it's just the sheer standards that he sets. Um, um, you can sometimes go too far and describe, you know, the, the role of the manager back then as someone who was quite aloof from the players. Uh, yet they, they, they were running the business. Um, they were a link between the, the staff, the players, uh, and the other staff at the club and the board of directors. So, so they had other wider role, a role to do. Um, but that being said, um, to be manager, you had to appoint the players, you had to know a bit about uh, the game to do that. And certainly Bill falls into that that category, you know, his experience as a trainer definitely, I think, sets some good stead from, from that perspective. So he is someone who um, knows the game in, inside out. But I think where he stands out, as I mentioned earlier, is, is simply the standards that he sets for his players and what he expects of his players. Many remember many years uh, later um, uh, meet, uh, meeting uh, Sandy Jardin, and, and Sandy actually donated to the to the museum a kind of code of conduct book, which was for any new player signing for Rangers. Is basically just explained the, the kind of background to the club, its history and traditions, and, and basically what was expected of a, a first team player at the club. That's a legacy you could probably say stretches back to the to the era of Bill Struth, the highest of standards, and and, 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 and you know like everybody else, you know when you read about. Um, the, the his, his his kind of reaction to players um, if they weren't properly attired, you know, even going to training to, to turn up in a collar and tie, and um, the bowler hats that they wore during match days. And you have to remember, you know, some of the clubs that Rangers were playing that time, one very good club actually was East Fife, top, top side, 1920s and 30s, Scottish Cup winners um, uh, in their day and, and, and actually doing very well in the league. Um, East Fife actually were um, a mining community. Some of the players were actually miners, former miners. So you can imagine East Fife maybe going to Ibrox and, and walking into Ibrox and seeing um, the, the Rangers first team coming in with the bowler hats on and really smartly dressed. But that, that was setting standards. Um, that, that was the psychology of football even back then. 
that um, when you turned up to Ibrox and you walked in, particularly after the the Bill Swift stand was built uh, in the late 1920s, you know you're walking into this it's, uh, into this ground which is gives you the, this impact of an institution. You know this is an institution. And you're walking in, and the, the psycho psychology starts right there, and, and then you go in and you see the, the players, the Rangers players, smartly dressed as well. Uh, and I think that's the something that Bills have brought to the game. Uh, his players were well trained, physically very fit. They knew what to expect um, as Rangers players. He had the, the ability to to bring in a good blend of players as well, um, and that sets the bar for success. Um, and that's what the other clubs had to try and obviously follow over much of that period of time. Just finally, um, he was appointed into the Scottish Football Hall of Fame in 2008. What does that say about his standing in the game and even today the fact that he's, he's still remembered there in the, in, the, in the Hall of Fame at Hamden? I think one of the, the issues with the Hall of Fame, the Scottish Football Hall of Fame, is that um, it's really dominated by public voting, which is a very positive thing. Um, but what can happen sometimes with public voting is people will vote for um, their own era. Um, um, so a lot of the people in the Hall of Fame have been inducted, you know, fantastic players and managers, but would be from the 1960s, 1970s, you know, into the recent past. So I think it stands um, uh, well, the, and, and it illustrates the stature of Bill Struth, you know, that very early on in the Hall of Fame that he was uh, nominated um, by the public and obviously voted into the Hall of Fame by the, the committee. Um, and, and it really gives you an idea about, about the legacy of Bill Struth that even today, in the 21st century, that, that so many people, you know, know uh, about him and his, his legacy at Rangers Football Club. Um, and, and that will always stand, I think, the club in, in good stead to remember, you know, the, the giants of the game that, that, that brought the club to where they are today. And I think when you, if you were going to handpick five or six people who really illustrate the, the, the history of Rangers and success of Rangers, well, Bill Struth would be right up there in your top selection.